Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to take the honor of introducing the chief guest, Mr. Hossein Daud, a Pakistani businessman and ardent philanthropist. He is the founder and chairman of Karachi School of Business and Leadership, a graduate management school. He is chairman of the board of trustees for the Daud Foundation, which has a legacy of establishing various education institutions across the country. Mr. Hussein Daud serves as chairman of the board of Engro Corporation and Daud Hercules Corporation Limited. His social responsibilities include memberships of the World Economic Forum and its Global Agenda Councils of Anti-Corruption and Education. He has been conferred the award Official Order of Merit of the Italian Republic by the Republic of Italy. Mr. Hussein Daud holds an MBA from the Kellogg School of Management, Northwestern University, USA, and is a graduate in metallurgy from Sheffield University, UK. Sir, you're requested to kindly proceed towards the rostrum to address our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Hussein Daud with a huge round of applause. اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر بورڈ آف گورنرز بورڈ آف ٹرسٹیز ڈاکٹر عذرا فضل پچو مس آصف ابوٹو ڈاکٹر سلمان شیخ پروفیسر ڈاکٹر ابھین مکاتی مس نسرین حق And I would like to, in absentia to also address uh, the President, Mr. Shanaz Wazir Ali, respected faculty, Dr. Kezar Bengali, Professor Riyad Sheikh, Engineer Javed Aziz, graduates and family members, the staff of Zabist, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whenever I'm invited to give a speech, I assure you I struggle intensely because I don't know what to say. Suffice it to say this, the reason perhaps could be that I've just completed 50 years of service to Pakistan. Surprising also is the fact that this is my 50th year of my marriage. <laughs> As I struggle along and I keep thinking, and my family is the one that has to put up with me as I'm struggling in my mind as to what I could share with you, I decided that first of all, I'm going to talk to you from the heart. I'm not going to talk to you with a prepared speech. I'm going to give you, I hope, some pointers which I have been able to assess during my lifetime. The first thing is, I'd like to address the slogan of Zabist, which is, discover yourself. Rumi said, when I was young, I want you to change the world. Now that I am wise, I want to change myself. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, when we're young, we want to go out, we want to go and change the world. We are absolutely inspired. We are motivated. We are full of life, passion, energy. We want to do something that is good. And those are wonderful attributes to have, wonderful thoughts to go out when you graduate. But graduation, ladies and gentlemen, for you will be a fundamental step change in your life. Once you leave, you will be looking at your successes as students while you join the great university of life. Now, when you join the great university of life, the opportunities that you have 
will be different, it will be unique, it will be individualistic. Depending on your situation, your background, it will depend on many factors, but it will be unique. And in that, as you try to struggle with yourself to understand what it is that you want to do, how can you contribute, how can you give back to life, now I will share with you the way I have done it. You've got to start off with an understanding in your mind as what is success for you. Every one of us wants to be successful, but our definitions of success are unique, uniquely individualistic. So you've got to decide what is success for you. And in the process, you've got to understand how long will it take you to achieve that success. If you're going to have multiple objectives, that means as you achieve one objective, you wish to achieve the next and then the next, that is one approach to life. Another one is where you have a single objective, and that objective is called discover yourself. You know, the closest individual to you is your body. Please understand that you will be living with your body 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But along with your body, the second aspect of you is your soul. It is your mind. It is your heart. And if you don't invest in that, then expect them not to perform when you want them to perform. When I'm talking about the mind and the soul, I look at it this way, that fundamentally there are two parts to our need for success. One is what I would call character. What are we? What is our personality? The second is what are the skill levels we have? What are the capabilities? Capabilities that you've acquired over many years of learning and have finally reached the stage where you're graduating. Now you're going to start the real journey, is the discovery of yourself. And to help you to do that, I will give you some pointers. And the pointers are this. When you get up in the morning and you look at yourself, ask a question, do I know you? Very simple question, but very telling. And say the next question, can I trust you? Are you a person who speaks the truth? Are you a person who keeps your commitments? Ask yourself these difficult questions. The beauty of it is this, that you know the answers and you cannot lie to yourself. So the fundamental foundation for understanding yourself is to start with those questions and ask yourself, can I be truthful? Can I conduct my life based on truth? Because if I can, then I have every opportunity to being able to convince my friends, my colleagues, my seniors, my juniors, my parents, my relations, one and all, that I'm a person of character. I'm a person that you can trust. And all relationship is based on trust. All achievements come about because of trust. If you do not develop the capability of being trusted, then you will not achieve the, the objectives or the success that you would like to bring about in your life. So I would suggest that you have a time frame of 50 years in your mind. Don't think in two, two years or a decade, 50 years. And say that during this period, I'm going to do my very best to develop my character upon which is based my personality. And that's all I've done all my life. I made a fundamental commitment early on that I was going to lead a life which is going to be based on truth. 
I made a profound commitment to myself, and that was that I will never lie. I never tell a lie. I'd rather face the music, I'd rather face the truth, I'd rather face whatever, but I will not break my commitment to myself. And you know what happens? Strange things happen. For example, in our group of companies, the foreigners that we, uh, we uh, sign joint ventures with, they have a profound trust in, in me and in my family. They are moved by what we do. And I'll give you an example. We sold 51% of Anglo Foods to the Dutch company, RFC. And they paid $450 million for that. That money came into Pakistan, alhamdulillah. The Dutch came in at a time when, frankly, it was the worst time for them. Everything was against the decision. There was Brexit going on. They had problems in Pakistan. Laws were changing. Difficulties being expressed in the marketplace. Everything, but everything was going wrong. And yet, in spite of all of that, they came forward and invested $450 million in Pakistan. Why did they do that? They told us subsequently it's because of the profound trust that they have in the family. And that trust has come about because I've invested time and my life and my energy in it. So there's a living proof of why telling the truth always, always, to everyone, and particularly to yourself, will lead you to a life which at the end you will feel content that I have lived my life according to my principles and according to my beliefs and my expectation of my capabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to address you. I will consider it a success of my speech if so much as one person makes a commitment tonight that henceforth they'll never lie again. Thank you, sir. We're honored to have you here today.